Fox 61 Morning News starts now. A Hartford neighborhood disrupted by gunfire. A man killed another in police custody. The new information we're learning this morning. The trial against Alex Jones set to resume later this morning. What's next in the case against the conspiracy theorist? And why Vice President Kamala Harris is visiting Connecticut tomorrow. We are breaking down those details this Tuesday morning as well. The case is viable. Uh, it is lawful. Uh, and um, we intend to win. It's an attack on law enforcement, and, and we're going to fight tooth and nail. And later in the second half hour of the show, a lawsuit seeks to overturn some of Connecticut's recently passed gun reforms. We'll hear from advocates and state leaders on that issue. All right. Good morning, everyone. It is 5 o'clock. It is nice to have you with us as we get started this Tuesday morning. I'm Keith McGilvery. And I'm Symphony Privet. Let's go ahead and get you up to speed with what's happening outside this morning. I noticed the roads were a little wet on mm -hmm. my way into work this morning. Will we need the umbrella as we head out the door? Yeah, on and off rain showers are expected for the next couple of days. Symphony. Keith, good morning to you guys. Uh, it is going to be a overall chilly and raw day today. Uh, when it's not raining, it's mostly cloudy and very breezy with gusts upwards of 25 to 35 miles per hour possible. So right now uh, we are looking at the satellite and radar where we are dealing with a bit of rain towards Windsor Locks, Bloomfield, South Windsor, and into Ellington along 91 this morning. Very light to moderate, so all manageable, but you will be needing that wind those windshield wipers every once in a while. Temperatures across the state ranging in the upper 40s and low 50s and gusts upwards of 20 to 25 miles per hour. These are a look at our sustained wind speeds at 20 miles per hour in New Haven, 16 in Bridgeport. So windy conditions are expected right through the afternoon and evening. And we do have those shower chances too with high temperatures only into the mid 50s across the state. Again, so when it's not raining, well, it's just a chilly and raw day. This likely continues into your Wednesday. And then as we get to closer to Thursday, it looks a little bit better. We'll talk much more about that coming up in just a bit. It is 5.02, so you know what that means. Lauren, good morning. <laughs> good morning to you, Rach. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully your Tuesday is off to a good start here in the Fox 61 Traffic Center. Not a whole lot going on. We do have a lot of construction getting ready to wrap up for the morning commute, so we know that comes with some delays, but luckily we know that those are just temporary. Let's take a look at our Hartford drive times. As of right now, 91, 84, Route 2, all moving smoothly. New Burton after the Hartford Tunnel will take you about five minutes traveling, just under 60 miles an hour. Construction has not wrapped up you have in the Weathersfield Hartford area as you're approaching the capital city but also coming out of the capital city as well. Taking a look at New Haven things are looking good on 91 and also 95 as we take a live look out in New Haven 95 looks good. We, we did see some really heavy delays yesterday on the Route 34 off ramp which is to the right side of your screen. As of right now nothing to complain about. Down in Fairfield County same thing following suit. Things are moving freely. I know Rachel was saying that there was some water on the roads and you can see that right here. Definitely some puddling out there on the road. So give yourself a little extra time if you are going to be heading out this morning just to make sure you, your commute to work or wherever you're going is extra safe. We'll check in again coming up in the next half hour. But for now, Keith, I'll send things over to you. New this morning, we are learning more details about a deadly shooting in Hartford's Parkville neighborhood. Monday, police identifying the victim as 23-year-old Jaziel Phillips Ray of Hartford. The suspect, Joseph Ray, still in the hospital this morning, but is in police custody. Police believe the shooting started as an attempted carjacking on Park Street just after 3 Monday afternoon. They say the driver and the suspects opened fire. The driver also in the hospital this morning. People living in the area surprised by what happened here. They say their neighborhood usually pretty quiet. Um, but I mean, it's not too surprising for Hartford. There's been a lot of like uh, murders and stuff like that going on. Uh, this an ongoing investigation at this point. Police still looking for information. If you have any details as to what happened here, you're asked to call the Hartford PD. 504 now after weeks of emotional testimony the defamation trial against Alex Jones resumes today in a Waterbury courtroom. Alex Jones is expected to take the stand again this week. The judge also told the jury that this week will likely be the last week of evidence before they have to decide how much money and damages to pay the families.
We are quickly approaching election day and learning the vice president making her way to Connecticut for an open discussion on abortion access. Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc joining us live in studio this morning. So Julia, walk us through what the vice president's trip will look like and there's some importance here to the timing as well. Yeah, there sure is. Vice President Kamala Harris is paying a visit to Central Connecticut State University tomorrow in New Britain. She will be joined by Representative Johanna Hayes and the president of Planned Parenthood and they're going to be hosting a roundtable discussion specifically on abortion access. Now, this is all coming, of course, after the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade, leaving it up to the states to decide on restricting or allowing access to abortions here in Connecticut. Now, abortion is protected right now, not only for our direct neighbors, but for others looking to access those services from other states where they've been banned. Now, the timing and reason for this visit, Annalise say, is of course intentional. Representative Hayes is up for re-election on November 8th, and her challenger, former State Senator George Logan, has been slammed by congressional Democrats for not supporting abortion rights. However, Logan says he does support a woman's right to choose. Now, Hayes has a history of both introducing and supporting legislation protecting reproductive health care in Congress. We've also seen it become a large part of her re election campaign and just because there's access to abortion now here in our state he says it doesn't mean it'll stay that way forever it's not something that comes back quickly um, once those freedoms are gone they're gone once again, Republican challenger Logan is pro-choice, but does not agree with late-term abortions. He says Hayes should be more focused on the economy and other issues he believes that people in Connecticut here care about more. So I think it would be more important to have the opportunity of having the Vice President of the United States of America here in Connecticut, here in New Britain, to talk about those issues. Now, CCSU is hosting the event, and university administrators tell us Harris's team is already. Now, this discussion is open to a live audience, and a limited number of tickets have already been made available to students and staff at the college. Symphony, we'll send it back to you. Thank you, Julia. Now, be sure you stick with us here on Fox 61 for complete coverage of Vice President Harris's visit to Connecticut on Wednesday. And don't forget, you can also download the free Fox 61 News app to get all the information you need sent right to your phone. And we are hearing from the state after West Hartford alerted its residents about unsolicited absentee ballot applications from candidate campaigns. Deputy Secretary of the State Scott Bates saying these applications are allowed to be sent out as long as whoever does it follows the law. Groups uh, out there, political parties or um, interest groups can send these applications out. Um, but they have to register with the town clerks when they do it uh, to let them know what's going on. All right, so if you want an absentee ballot, the folks in West Hartford say applications can be downloaded from the town's website and then brought to town hall. If you receive an unsolicited application, you don't need it, don't want it, you can simply just throw it out. Now to Hartford, where a man was found guilty of manslaughter in connection with the death of his baby girl. Uh, his case stems back to 2018 when officials got a call about a badly injured baby. A seven-week-old Emily was found with a brain bleed and a severe spinal injury. She died several days later at the hospital. Her parents, Edwin Babylonia and Ashley Perez Rivera, were later arrested. After the investigation revealed both parents tried to stop the baby's crying, but police say Babylonia shook the baby, which caused her injuries. And the child's mother pleaded guilty to the charges in this case. An 11-year-old in Waterbury was arrested after being accused of making a threat referencing Gil Martin Elementary School. A police say the threat was posted on social media and there were more officers at the school Monday as police investigated that threat. Now, the child is not a student at Gil Martin and is charged with first degree threatening and second degree breach of peace. Several other schools in Waterbury have also dealt with threats in the last few weeks. 
Happening today at Eastern Connecticut State University, an event aimed at raising awareness about domestic violence, all in memory of a victim who was a student there at the school, Alyssa Wiley, a sophomore psychology major, when she was killed in 2013 by her ex-boyfriend. The third annual Alyssa Wiley and Relationship Violence Awareness event is from noon to four in the Student Center Lobby and Sports Center Gymnasium. White President Joe Biden busy traveling to two areas this week hit hard by different but equally devastating hurricanes. Yeah, he toured one area and he now plans to visit another hard hit area in need of some serious relief. All right, details meanwhile on what's planned to prevent the catastrophic flooding from happening again. We will take a deeper look at that. And coming up at 524, remote work might not be the way to go. We'll tell you why a new report says it could cause some to be out of a job.